Well, I just got back from a week-long silent retreat from Hollyhock Center uh, on Cortez Island in British Columbia. And it's not silent anymore. You can probably hear Bailey playing with one of his toys. So um, have patience with Bailey. Today's uh, vlog will start with me at the ferry dock in Swasson, which is near Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, and then um, a short little um, segment on um, me getting up to Cortez Island. Uh, the weather was uh, probably the worst weather I've ever experienced at uh, Hollyhock, and I've been going to Hollyhock for well over 30 years. Uh, I think it's 33, 34 years. I didn't go. I don't go every year, but um, I think uh, I've missed five years randomly here and there, a year here, a year there. But this was the worst weather, and we experienced what the weather people are calling a bomb cyclone. Um, and it um, <clears throat> about I got there in, in, in early afternoon, and by late afternoon uh, it had hit, and it downed a bunch of trees in the road. People that were still trying to get to uh, Hollyhock had to uh, maneuver around the trees and the live electricity wire. We lost power for for two days, and it was cold. So it was quite an adventure. Um, <clears throat> the presenters for this retreat didn't get there till two days later. They had stopped ferries, they had stopped airplanes, there just wasn't anywhere, any way for these people to get to, to the retreat. So, um, it was bad, and because the weather was so bad, I did tape some of that, uh, but I am going to drop some photographs from better years so you can see just how gorgeous it is uh, at Hollyhock. Once the retreat started, I was silent. I did some filming, but um, I was completely silent for the retreat. So I uh, am in line to catch a ferry. Um, I was going to go to Victoria, but I'd, it's uh, now about noon, uh, a little afternoon actually, more like 12.30. And um, if I would have gotten a ticket for a Victoria sailing on the ferry, I would have to wait till almost 6 o'clock. Now, so I got a ticket to Nanaimo. I'll just skip Victoria this trip. They think, think, they, they can get me on the next ferry, which is at, uh, I think it's 3.15, something like that. So I have to wait in line here for about three hours. If they can't, I've got to wait till 5.45. So keep your fingers crossed. I'll... I'm keeping mine crossed and I'll let you know what happens. Well over 30 years ago, as I've mentioned several times on this trip, I, uh, I came up here for the first time. And back then, 
there wasn't a, an inter-island highway, a four-lane highway. It was just a two-lane road all through, along the coast like this, whereas the, the current highway is almost a straight line. And you used to go through the little towns, whereas now you have to pull off the highway and go down into the towns. I have some time before I have to be at my next stop, so I've decided to take the coastal route. Um, I'm pretty sure this is my last time coming up here, and um, this allows me to uh, relive that very first time. I think the third time I came up here, they had the, the coastal highway already, I mean the uh, inner island highway, uh, all done and from that point on we used it but I'm, I'm for today I'm using the coastal route going through the small towns and I have to say that I get choked up uh, I really do uh, the first time I took this trip it changed me uh, by the time I was done with the retreat and I like to think that coming up here so many times has made me a better person um, through these retreats. Um, this is the last time. So, uh, yeah, what can I say? I'm taking... So I'm on the ferry, left Campbell River, and now we're headed to Quadra Island. I'll drive across Quadra Island and catch the ferry to Cortez Island.
This is the first time I've been here in at this time of year. Usually it's April or May. You can see that uh, the season in the garden is pretty much over. This building is called Carousel, out in the woods here on Cortez Island. And my room is in the men's dorm here at Carousel, which has been room eight for well over 20 of the years that I've been here. And this is the men's dorm. That's my bed there. This is where we put our clothes. And this is the washroom. La Toilette.
Well, it's been a little interesting first several hours here at the retreat center. <clears throat> uh, as I may have mentioned earlier uh, in earlier vids, um, the whole West Coast from Northern California up through Vancouver Island uh, is supposed to get hit by what they call a bomb cyclone, which is a big, huge storm similar to a uh, uh, not similar. It's got hurricane uh, type winds, a lot of rain. And um, when I came over from Campbell River, everything was calm. There was no wind. There was rain. It was a mist, uh, a strong mist, but there was no uh, big wind or anything. I get here, I get checked in, I come to my room, I put all my stuff up all of that <clears throat> and um, while I'm um, doing all of that the power goes out and um, retreat t teachers tend to talk very slow very softly and um, I don't know what's going to happen if uh, if there's no power for the microphones uh, additionally <laughs> Uh, the two teachers who are going to be leading this retreat uh, have some physical issues and they can't take long car rides. So they had um, arranged for a pontoon plane to bring them in, only when the storm hit, and trust me, it hit, uh, they canceled that flight. So uh, at, as it is right now, there are not going to be any retreat teachers here today. They're hoping to make it tomorrow, which shortens the retreat. This is already a, a fairly short retreat for me. Um, it's, uh, it's designated as a seven-day retreat. <clears throat> what tends to happen during retreats like this is it doesn't get started until the first evening and it usually ends at the very uh, last morning so it's whatever days are in between and and that was going to be five days all of a sudden now it may actually be four if in fact the teachers can make it um so there's that um a lot of the people here i've sat with at this retreat a lot and uh, i was talking to a couple of them and they came in on the ferry after I did. It was after the storm hit and there were power lines and trees down all over the place, live power lines in the road. Um, evidently the entire island is without power right now. So that gives you a sense. Uh, it, it was, like I said, it was really <clears throat> soft wind, uh, nothing major. Uh, some rain, mist, and then w without the wind ramping up at all, it was soft, it was soft, and then bam, just like that. And, and it was literally just like that. And um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what kind of, uh, how it all turns out. You know, being on retreat, everything is just as it is. So we'll manage here. Um, as long as there's no heat <clears throat> and you know we're we're in British Columbia so it's it's not going to be warm out <laughs> here at the end of October uh, thankfully they've got gas stoves in the lodge so I, I'm assuming we'll continue to eat for however long the power is out um, but yeah we'll see what happens I may not even have roommates because they couldn't get here. We'll have to wait and see what happens. So uh, hang in there. You'll find out when I do. Well, actually, you'll find out a little bit later because I'm not getting home for a week. <laughs>
This is the Babatunde Olentunji Hall, named after the great African drummer who used to come and do workshops here every year. As a matter of fact, I brought my oldest boy, uh, Tyler, to one of his workshops here, and we, um, we practiced for a week, and then we gave a performance at the community hall on the island. It was a lot of fun. But this is where we'll be sitting this week. You'll notice that there's a lot of space in front of the chairs. That's for people who brought their own uh, zafus. It's not completely set up yet. There'll be uh, some, w at least one Buddha in the hall. They usually put flowers, but this late in the season, I'm not sure that's going to happen. This is where the teachers will sit, and they'll set things up. This is where the sound person will be. There is my bench, and we'll see what happens. This is Kiyakum, and um, I hadn't been in this building for several years, and I have to admit that being in there was quite emotional for me. Um, this is where I did my very first retreat, didn't know how to meditate, had never heard of the spiritual path that I'm on now, and uh, the teachers were, uh, there were three teachers, Jack Cornfield, Kamala Masters and Gil Fronstall. And I came out of that retreat a completely changed person, and I hope a better person. So it was quite emotional being in Kiyakum. For the next 10 years or so, all my retreats were in this building. Now this building is known as Raven, and after the retreats were moved out of Keokum, this is the building where they were held. 
It's um, on a hill a ways away from the lodge, not nearly as far away as the Olentunji Hall, but uh, it's far enough away that uh, the Hollyhock staff does a really good job of trying to remain silent while uh, we're all silent in the retreat. Uh, but this allows them to do some outside work and hammering and not bothering us too much. Uh, obviously, Olentunji is, is even more so that way. Up until about three years ago, maybe four years ago, this is after we moved out of Kiakum, this is where it was. And finally, we come to what I think is the newest building, uh, and that's the sanctuary. That's what this building is known as. Notice all those rocks. Uh, almost all of them came from the beach. You'll see um, the, how rocky the beach is here in a minute. But I, I can remember that um, when this building was being built and that rock wall was being built, that uh, we brought up a rock, a, a decent-sized rock, and we all blessed it before it went into that wall. Now, you'll notice that it's, uh, while there is wood, uh, it appears to be surrounded by that white plaster. I, I don't know that that's plaster, but I can tell you that the walls are actually hay. And uh, this is a, um, an eco-friendly building, and the architectural idea from, for this sort of construction came from Oregon State University and if, if I'm if I can remember correctly I think Hollyhock worked with the uh, Oregon State folks uh, as they were, were building this building. Now I'm a duck but in this particular instance I'm gonna say go Beavs. This is a, a nice building.
So in order to get off the island, um, you got to get here early if you want to get off early. A lot of times what happens is the the locals will bring their car down and park it overnight so that they can get on the very next uh, ferry when they get here. Sometimes it's the first one, sometimes they don't get here till the second one. People go around them. But um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a quarter after six in the morning. Um, it's dark and I'm waiting for the ferry. So that was Hollyhock this year. And if you made it this far, please pat yourself on the back and know that I really appreciate it. While I was in Canada this year, I learned some things, one of them being uh, something I didn't know about. And um, the, the retreat ended on Halloween. That was the last day of the retreat. And I was going to, um, I knew that, and I was going to bring one of my masks, uh, but I, I forgot it, so it didn't, come, it didn't make the trip. But in Canada, Halloween is the biggest fireworks day of the year. Who knew? Anyway, thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you subscribe. I hope that uh, you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week.